On to Rollup 36 introduction, uh, another cool rollup which we uh, have in the pipeline, which our R&D department um, contributed and uh, created and really created cool new features and fixes and smaller improvements as well. And we are really happy to show you it to you for the first time uh, so you can test it um, till this is published. So um, what we are doing today is we are showing you the Rollup 36 as an HR manager and uh, really give you a hands-on and look at what is new, what is happening and um, what you can expect from the newest rollup, which by the way will be published at the end of May. Um, for that, we request uh, that you go to your partner center and download uh, this rollup 36, which right now has RC status, and uh, help us testing it so that when we publish it end of May, we can really have a solid rollup, which is uh, benefiting all of you and all of your customers as well. As always, each rollup, uh, we take a deep dive in one of our modules and try to improve it and try to create new functionality focused on that very, um, very um, uh, module in there. This rollup, we focused on recruiting. Um, Barat, who is here with me and will show you the, uh, the recruiting part, will show you the Broadbean integrations. A Broadbean integration, an integration which all of you are waiting for a long, long time since the duplication of talent. Why? Because we are finally able to also publish again on LinkedIn. And the benefit is uh, because we are using Broadbean as a multi-poster, uh, we are able to publish not only to LinkedIn, but to 2,500 job boards around the world and with uh, a lot of specification in there. We have a hiring team um, which uh, is helping you to share applications in there uh, and also get to have feedback not only by the supervisor but getting really feedback from a bigger group of people uh, who are part of the hiring process. We have changes in the recruiting portal and one of the biggest changes which we are having is we have stability improvements in the D365 HR integration. Um, uh, really looking forward to show you what we done that and um, we have minor improvements which we also want to show but the biggest part which we like to show to you is the recruiting part and this is what we are planning to do with you in the next hour um, maybe a bit longer let's see Please, at any point in time feel free to ask all your questions uh, either with chat uh, we are monitoring the chat and we will answer them right away or just unmute yourself, ask a question right away and we will get you the answer immediately. Mm -hmm. um, not in the focus, but always included in every roll-up. Uh, I will uh, read out all the solved customer tickets, the product bugs which we had in the previous roll-ups and we'll get to you. As you are, uh, as you are used to, to Vera being here with me to introduce that, um, I found myself a new colleague. It's not a new colleague. Barat is with us six years now. Uh, really qualified and great consultant. Uh, love to have him in team, and also I love that he is supporting me today with the introduction of Rollup 36. And with no further ado, please, Barat, show us the property in integration. Thank you. Yeah. I'll take over the screen control or presentation. OK, good day to you all. Um, so first time I'm I'm presenting, I don't have a teleprompter in front of me, so the script is mine. So if there are any mistakes, please uh, bear with me. So uh, today, like we mentioned before, uh, the focus for RU36 is recruiting, right? Because we have uh, massive features that's coming in. It's going to be uh, a really a large improvement and new features that has been introduced to RU36. So currently you're seeing a screen from the older version, which is uh, how it used to be. And then when I present the new 
system to you with 36, you would see a massive difference and what you can do within 36 is mind blowing, right? Um, here for all the employees who have uh, seen the current um, or the previous solar up or the ones who haven't seen it before because they have new employees. What I did is for your benefit, I have a system that is open, which is the current version. No, not the current version, it's 35. And then I will present what is coming up new. You can see the difference, right? If I directly start presenting the new features, you wouldn't understand. So previously, you can have a vacancy that you can post it to a website. So the website is the portal. So I have a vacancy here and I have the publishing channels. Currently, we can publish to a portal that is a Microsoft product and Stepstone and Zing. My question to my management was why we are not integrating to more recruiting channels. It is uh, it's it's difficult and we have to interact with every job board out there to publish the jobs to the different recruiting channels. So uh, there was a simpler, simpler answer to this, uh, but it's just we waited until 36 things uh, were in the back burner. We were working together on the product level to integrate to something that is really big, which can actually interact with job boards across the world with thousands of uh, uh, recruiting portals. So with the new feature, you would see new uh, controls that you can use where you can then publish to multiple channels, right? So currently you don't see that in this particular screen. Also, what you won't see is this is a vacancy which I can publish to my portal the applicant is visiting the portal and they are responding to that which will directly be listed under applications right there's no change there but what you wouldn't see is that how can i then nurture my application uh, who is involved in this process you really have to go and and add new steps and there are no control on uh, if there's a panel interview where you want to collaborate with your team members there is no possibility there right now with 36, if that's a possibility. So what I would uh, present today is how you can use this broad broadbean integration to post to multiple channels. And then when you have the applications coming in, you can even collaborate with your team members, right? So quickly, I will close these windows. This is the older version. And now that's the new version. So uh, as a preparation, I have already a vacancy which is catering to this requirement. I even have it on the portal with all these new changes. So you can immediately see that you have uh, um, a new vacancy that is being created. I have enabled hiring team, which means that when an application is coming in, I can define who will be um, interacting with the applications. And most importantly, I have the broad beam. Okay. So this is where I can actually uh, prepare the vacancy and then I can post it to multiple channels. So I will show you in the next steps how we can get here and how we can then use this Broadbean as a platform to pub publish to uh, to various uh, recruiting channels or to the uh, to the job boards out there. OK. Right. So um, what I have is if I go back to my vacancy. I have a couple of vacancies which I have already posted account manager to my portal and now I would like to uh, publish the project manager to the portal as well as to the um, to the broad bean right where I can integrate and then I can publish to multiple channels so vacancies. I will focus only on the required fields that is uh, for you it's important that we can publish to the channels that I mentioned so I want to use the new features. I will first enable the hiring team. I can then add more team members later. Also, not to forget, I have to go to the details. I have to place the portal URL here, which means that when somebody is actually applying through Broadbean through these different channels, they can come through the portal and then you can get the applications in the system. OK. Um, Quickly, what I would want to do is. So, first so sorry, wait, wait. On... Was, there, was there a question? It was really. I heard something. No, I think it was, a it was a disturbance from somebody's line. 
Okay. Um, okay. So sorry, here, Bharat, please go ahead. Yeah. So first focus is broad bean, right? So what I did is from the external job boards uh, validation. So I need to know what is required for a successful publishing to broad bean. So I have I'm currently validating this particular control that I can see what is required for me to uh, to publish to broad bean. So I can use this feature and it shows it shows that there are uh, required fields which I have to fill to fulfill that I can then publish to the broad bean uh, to the platform. So I quickly fill what is required for this uh, vacancy. It should be in euros. I will choose one of the existing um, job in industries. It doesn't matter, but it will it will feed into broad beans. Doesn't matter in the sense it will still feed into broad bean. Job type permanent and uh, salary frequency. I'll keep, keep it as month. Sorry, and then let me save this. Okay. And uh, this is what is required, but you still have to publish it, right? We have to uh, tell the system that, OK, I would like to use some of these recruiting channels there. I can then post my job to these uh, to these options so I can still move these um, my vacancy to the publishing step. You can do it in first step. You can do it in the fourth stage. OK, I'll keep it in the publishing stage. So this is when I'm, I can actually choose. OK, this is where I'm going to uh, uh, post it to the internal people or to external. So I'll choose internal and external, which means that the employees can also see the listing from their self-service login and also whatever I'm choosing now, they are uh, they can also uh, get to the external candidates or the applicants out there can can view it. OK, let's save it. And I'm going to start the uh, before doing this. I want to do the website. And Broadbean too. So website is a portal. I have it open there and Broadbean is you will see in a few seconds what happens right now. It's currently. Um, OK, it says it's failed. Job location. OK, there's another required field for my. Successful publishing. Yeah, this is something that I was told that I have to fill the job location before I publish. OK, but we will add it to the validation. That's something that we'll uh, work will work on. OK, so. I want to show you another feature, so I will use multiple locations in this case. Also, I will choose the multi, multi location possibility. This is a new feature, by the way, where you can select the, um, a job location, just one, or you can have also multiple locations listed in the vacancy. So I'm going to quickly add all the possibilities in here. So I have this project manager in different cities. OK. It's getting listed there. OK, now I hopefully I have filled everything that is required. I'll go back to my. Publishing. Try again. OK, don't published. I just give a few seconds. The screen loads automatically and you can see the broad bean tab is already added to the screen. OK, so that's the interface. It's an iframe interface that's uh, Broadbean has uh, given us from the vacancy. Now I can start posting to different channels. So uh, in this particular system, I don't have a subscription to LinkedIn or I don't have the possibilities for the different um, different job boards, but I just took a screenshot on how it would look like when you have a subscription. So it's from one of the uh, presentations done by Broadbean. You can see that the same screen you can now see all the possibilities. If you have subscription to LinkedIn, Monster, any job board that you have, you will see that in the list. So very similar to this, you would see all the subscriptions. Then I can then say, OK, all sites below. In my case, it's just one. I can only post it to Broadbean uh, just for the um, showcase. Then I press on continue. 
So in your case, you would have the job boards which you can enable and then continue. Okay, this is a feature. This is a setting from Broadbean and everything is then mapped from my job. Everything is there from the job profile. It's feeding into my vacancy. Okay, and then give a location again. So it took the URL from my vacancy. So this is where the apply URL will be inserted into these different job boards. And they'll be routed through the portal. Right? May I ask two different questions real quick? Yeah, sure. Hi, Armin here from Incubit. Um, Hi, Armin. Thank you so far. So uh, the first question was you chose just right directly. Um, right now you chose the location as Berlin, Germany, but right before you chose multiple locations. Where's the difference? Yeah, so uh, this I can I can uh, cl clarify how it will work with the different job boards, but the multiple location is the next feature that is actually feeding in, into my uh, to my portal. So um, this multiple location is kind of another feature which might not work with Broadbean is what we see right now because Broadbean is encouraging uh, per location you have to enter and it is clearly not mapped. I can check with my product team why it's not being mapped currently. And this is the first first release, so you would see new features, new improvements in the next updates to come, but this is a working model. You can still go with, uh, let's say if the multiple location is not working with Broadbean, you can go with single location and still post it onto the different job boards. Keep in mind that all the job boards, they don't really encourage multiple locations, so they only uh, process one location per per uh, posting. But what we are doing in the new uh, in the new update is that we are supporting portal that it can actually uh, you can show different locations and the application or the applicants can see that the job is open in different locations. OK, thanks for that one. Uh, that was definitely sufficient. The second question was um, I've seen a rich text editor right there on the broad bean tab. Is it oh, Holger's nodding? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to insert also templates from each customer uh, regarding their CI? Um, I, I doubt because the uh, we we are still sending the um, the text into uh, in an HTML format with all the editing, but it's actually not showing in Broadbean. They're just taking the text out of it, and they are using that. Holger, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'd like to add something there. Um, for the Broadbean integration, there we have to distinguish between two parts. First, what we deliver as a vacancy only, meaning each vacancy which you are publishing, we are publishing the content or pushing the content in HTML to Broadbean. Part of the HTML can be, of course, a template because this is completely based on what you have filled in the job advertising anyway. So this is already template based uh, because our job profiles are basically the templates of the vacancy itself. And of course, you can add pictures in there, you can add fonts in there, colors, etc., so that you can make it CI based. The second one is of course, Broadbean is a service on its own and it is connecting it to the different profiles and pushing it to the different profile it created on the individual job boards. And there are job boards who allow more CI than others. Now, if you think about LinkedIn, they force yeah. you to at least a certain extent to use a LinkedIn CI and only have it inserted in a certain way. All of this can be added in LinkedIn directly. Uh, in in uh, Broadbean directly uh, when you are setting up the accounts into Broadbean so that you allow them uh, to publish on your behalf because that is what they are doing. They are publishing it on your behalf with your user, with your um, subscription on the individual job boards which they have in there. And of course, CI is depending on the job board. Broadbean is trying to publish it, but the content itself um, of, of the vacancy itself um, is already in HTML coming from us and is already template based in the job profiles anyway. 
Okay, okay, so that's also, uh, thank you for the answer. For, for me, just to summarize it real quick, I can partially do template-based job postings, um, but when it comes to having just, let's say there's, let's, let's give it a best practice with a happy path itself. I have three job portals and they don't have any limitations when it comes to CI of the job posting. Uh, and uh, we have those three job portals. We uh, include them to Broadbean. We do like the whole thing in the rich text editor, like adding some pictures, mm -hmm. whatever. And then we post it up and this would work. But if we want to do it multiply, like with different vacancies, let's say uh, I'd like to post like three to five to four vacancies in the next couple of hours uh, and mm -hmm. on all these three job post uh, job portals, I won't be able to just use the same framework as an HTML because well, I'm not able to insert a basic template and then just fulfill all the information content and so on. You will have the basic content already in the job profiles, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and when you're, this is not depending on, on our rollup or so, but yeah. if you are creating a vacancy based on a job profile, you just have to fill three fields, which is number of vacancies, job profiles, and department. That's all. Yeah, and then it is pulling anything, including the HTML text, um, so the template from the job profile anyway. So you have a template functionality and you can, with filling three fields, the ones on the left right here, uh, it is pulling it anyway from the job uh, profiles and you can publish it right away. And so... Uh, your example, publishing five different vacancies to Broadbean inside of five minutes is absolutely possible if you created the job profiles in advance. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So while you spoke, I, I tried this. So I just went back and changed the HTML to, to have a header that was in red. So it is taking the HTML editing. So the first time when I actually used the main job profile, I didn't have any any coloring or any any uh, using the tool toolbar from HTML, but I just went back and, and updated the job profile to red and it's actually taking that. So it is, you can of course insert images and I should, it should populate that image there. So which means that the job profile is a template. You can do your uh, templating, you can you can have your toolbar work there, and th that is actually feeding into Broadbean. But from there, what happens when it reaches the uh, the actual job board is something again. It depends on what the job board is actually uh, requesting the Broadbean and what is possible there. Whether you can show images within the text or can you show uh, colors that you're using here? It's up to how the actual job board is requesting those information from Broadbean. So this is outside currently our testing, in fact. So you can you can see how it will work out when you post it to the different job boards. Okay. But thank you, Armin. Great question. I think it helped a lot of us in this call uh, to see this whole workflow on how it is structured uh, coming from job uh, profiles, going to vacancy and publishing it on the different job boards. Thank you for that. Yeah, welcome in that case, but also thank you to you. Yeah, so this is the feature because I cannot show you the the publishing part on the different uh, different recruiting channels. So you have you saw what how quickly you can you can uh, now start posting to Broadbean. Uh, there might be many questions on how to set up and other things which we will not focus today because this is the HR's uh, point of view. How you can when you see the system which is already configured, how you can use it. So what I did is I went to the uh, to the vacancy which I would like to publish. I validated the broad beam just to see what are the required fields. I filled it in. Uh, so the second time I even chose single location because it was not supporting the multi-location. So I just went with single location, all the required fields, and then I was able to quickly within seconds post to Broadbean, right? So the Broadbean tab itself is a session. So it, this will be, I think, will be uh, throwing you an error for now, but it's actually not an error. Um, you have to visit the actual website they provide you. So that's the URL. You can go there and see how your vacancies are performing and uh, where you can then control whether to pull it out of some job boards or keep it live on certain recruiting channels, right? So that's all done from the uh, Broadbean platform. But again, these improvements will come in uh, in future, but it's again a working model which you can take to the market and the end users, your customers can use start using it. So that's the Broadbean integration. So uh, it's a massive step towards 
publishing to different uh, recruiting channels. Like I said, if there are technical questions, you can and write to Holger and me after the next days. Yeah, definitely, we can give you all the answers that is required. So the next is um, I would like to show the portal changes and then when um, and also about the the hiring team, right? How you can then involve multiple people when a new um, application is into the system. So let's do that. Currently, I have a vacancy. This is the one that I posted onto the website. So what I'm going to do is I have enabled the hiring team. You can see that it's enabled. It's a new feature in 36. You wouldn't find that in the existing versions. And I have a um, hiring team uh, table that is already there. So, and what I have done is if I go to the settings, there's a new table hiring uh, team members. Now I can add the users uh, who usually participate in, in different uh, steps of the application process. So the application process, usually the first few steps are validation. So if somebody is validating mainly from the recruiting team, and then when it comes to the phone interview and face-to-face -face interview, this is when you actually collaborate with your line managers or with your other team members, right? Now I have three test users in the system, employee, supervisor, and manager, the HR manager. And I have given some tasks to them that, okay, if an, an application comes in, uh, the employee, let's say my team member who is doing the telephonic interview would then be notified, will be giving a feedback on that application. The HR manager type of user will be involved in both telephonic and face-to-face -face, and I want the line manager to be part of the face-to-face -face interview when the actual the applicant is interacting with the HR team and with the employee of course so depending on who is doing that interview so I have these team members already allocated what they will do at which point they will be notified and be part of the application process so this is a new table new setting and I'm going to go back to let's see quick feedback okay this is the feedback once they give it and I'm going to go back to my vacancy. OK, just see if we can get the recent. That would be the one. All right, so now I have defined my users, what will be their role in the application, but I have to now uh, add those users into this particular vacancy because some vacancies I don't need my employee to be giving feedback. So for this vacancy, I'm just going to involve my line manager and the hiring manager or the HR manager. So I'm going to quickly choose uh, supervisor. Required for both. And I also need my HR manager. In this case, only the face to face interview. OK, that's these two stages you have uh, the and within the application, not here in the application. There are two stages they will be getting involved, but I'm defining that in the vacancy. Now that is the team members, I will show you how they will give feedback once we have a new application made towards this project manager. There are new features that I would show you um, that is actually showing up on the portal so that quickly we can we can talk about that and then go to the portal, cover that bit, and then we can come back and um, you know, in fact do an application from there and show this team members how they are giving feedback to the incoming application. So before that, I would like to, OK, this is currently published, so it's fine. And the other new feature, of course, is uh, the multi location. So for this particular vacancy, I'm I am actually would like to post it for multiple locations. So what I have done is um, I just did some testing. So I chose multiple location. I created a location called multiple location. So what I did is I have just went to um, so it's called the training. Uh, in this. Second providers. In fact, it's missing in this list. Defense. Oh, it's missing the site map all of a sudden. Okay, let's go back to the settings. 
locations. Yeah, I think it was previously called training locations. Now it's been moved to the HR settings. So I have all the locations and even have a multiple location as a new record in there. So if I want to use the portal functionality where let's say the customer is not interested in Broadbean, but they're still used to would like to post the vacancy onto the portal where they want to show that, okay, this uh, particular vacancy is available for multiple locations. So I have added a location called multiple locations and also the different locations that are possible where this vacancy can be uh, listed for. So I'll go back to my vacancy. Okay. Details, and that's what I have done. The main location is I want to show on the portal that is available everywhere. It's like multiple locations, and I also have added the cities where it will be shown on the on the vacancy itself that it's available in seven different cities, right? So that's done. And a few more things is that previously when you have a vacancy posted onto the portal, it always follows the same image pattern, right? So if you start from the first page, it has a banner. If you click on it, it shows another image and then it goes on, but it doesn't change depending on the vacancy itself. So there was a request that how it would be nice that uh, without the web designing, you can show different images depending on the on the vacancy itself. So we thought, okay, we'll try this out. In the new update, there is a feature which you can actually use to to do this differentiation. That okay for a project manager, I really want to showcase uh, something that is very specific to that particular vacancy. How to do that? Um, quickly go to uh, let me get my get bearing site. So it is in the um, job advertisement section. So I can attach an image which will be shown only for this vacancy on the vacancy details form. So how to enable this? I'll go back to my settings page. So there's a new table called portal image. And I have a new theme called a theme project management. So I have attached an image. I don't know how it will turn out. Let's see in the portal and also have a title color. So it can be taken from a from internet, you have this HTML color coding. So the title of the vacancy will be shown in different colors. If you want to show it in red, blue, green, it's up to you. So that is this particular control here. So this is there, it's just a record. I have created this. I have an image that I have uploaded. Now I'm going back to this vacancy of mine. And I will link that theme into this particular lookup field. Okay, it should be this one here. Okay, done. One more new feature before we go to the portal is that if I click on details, uh, I have the recruiting contact details. So what I have done is I have Veronica Williams, an employee, uh, also a recruiter. So her image can be shown on the portal. So I'll show you quickly how it is currently maintained. Okay, if I go to her employee file, and click on HR details, so you can see an external facing image that you can maintain. So this is the image that can be used on the portal. So this will not for everyone, of course, for the recruiters, you can, you can have this public image and that will be shown on the portal. And it's up to you whether you wanna add that to the vacancy, but for this particular vacancy, I have added it. So now it's all there. Let's see if we can see that on the portal real time. So that's the one that is already I did for testing, but I want to show you um, if also it worked on our particular vacancy. That's a project manager. Okay, that's the one. Fingers crossed. Wow. So the image that I used, it's currently seen on the on this particular vacancy. I can also see the locations. There are multiple locations. So it's just a table insert on the form. Uh, the applicant can see that, okay, the location is, is multiple location. And as they scroll down, the image of that record is also seen on the vacancy, right? So that's the very quick view on the form. But let's quickly go back to the home page to see how else uh, can they actually filter. So. I did the multiple locations on the main field because it's a lookup field which is shown here, but I can still uh, filter if there are like hundreds of vacancies. I'm only interested in Frankfurt and then just go and filter it out. 
So I only have project manager. So I think I would use the product like this, that the main field is showing multiple locations, but you still maintain the table where then the applicant can search for locations, you know, depending on the preferred location that they have. So they don't have to search, okay, which uh, vacancy out of this entire list is actually in Frankfurt. So I'm gonna go to the project manager vacancy. So I can see that, okay, there are multiple locations, of course. Um, and I can I can control this image as a as a recruiter. This is targeted to the project manager. You can see title. It's kind of currently purplish blue. That's also controlled from the portal image uh, table that I showed you before. Okay. As I scroll down, everything is standard from the last roll up. Nothing has changed except for this. This is the recruiter along with the image. So there is no need for any uh, web designing. It's all done with just with the uh, from the portal from the um, system and a little bit of flow that we use which we just quickly shows on the portal form okay now i'm going to use this apply for this job option and some problem so i'm going to use a different browser i was signed on before just sign out Okay, I'm gonna try again. Okay, now. Who can I think of any other name very quickly? Bruce Wayne is beautiful. Thank you. Great choice. Just go back in years so that they're not a minor applying for a job. Okay, email address. No other required fields, I just want to continue. So in this particular form, it's still the same from 35, of course, there were new features we remember from two roll-up updates before. So we have the option for the applicant to have a, their own account. Okay. So here there's a new new uh, field for them to select. Uh, they cannot select multiple. Unfortunately, they have to say their top uh, topmost what they would like to, which location they would like to. Uh, apply for. So I'm just choosing Frankfurt there. You can select the LinkedIn. Okay, you can start in June. No other required fields, just want to continue there. And also I will attach uh, quickly an image or uh, sorry, a PDF document. Go have something here and submit. I have the skill rating enabled for this, so let's see if also I'm I'm asked to enter the skills that is required. It's already creating the application, so the applicant is there in the system. Application is there. Now I have to enrich my application with skills. Okay, so let me rate conflict. This is an existing feature, but I just want to show you in the system. Once the hiring team is there, they can give feedback. Okay, that's done. Next. Okay, I don't want to create an account now, just finish it without creating an account. So going back, you see the applications, Bruce Wayne should be there. There he is, and let's open this application. Okay, 
So there's a new application is there. Everything is standard at this point, but you can see that team members it's pulled from the vacancy, right? They're just the whole process is now waiting for the stage to enter uh, telephonic and face to face. Then that's when these users will be notified. The application will be shared with them and they can then do uh, uh, the feedback for this application. So let's see what happens when the stage moves into this uh, step. The test system, I can't really show the email that is going out, but actually, trust me, there's an email and uh, sharing happens with these two users. At this point, they don't have access to the application because they might be a normal employee in the system. So with the sharing and assigning, we take care that they, they see the record when it actually moves into the telephonic interview. Okay, just want to move it also to face to face, so it creates these multiple records for us. Okay. Now at this point, I'll go to the feedback and wait for a few seconds. You can see that's already created. I only did that the um, supervisor is involved in all the steps, that is both telephonic and face-to-face. -face. HR manager is involved only in face-to-face -face interview. So I want to quickly open this record. Not me in the sense, it's actually done by the user. And now they can give a feedback on the application. What can they see already from this? They can see the skill levels that was actually given by the applicant. They can get to access the, the document and now they can give a good feedback. Um, they have the also the, the access to applicant information and now I can simply rate, give a feedback. Say yes. And now I have to submit. And do the same thing for the other um, records too. I can do it on behalf of the users, but in real, in reality, the user themselves are giving the rating. This is the supervisor. Just like that. While you're Something doing different. that, um, let me point out um, that this form will be shared with the hiring team member. And this can be an employee. Um, but you see on the right hand side, they have only this add and functionality. So what we did is we made sure that they get access to this new entity, which is called hiring team feedback. But they don't get access and this is GDPR uh, related to the actual applicant or application data so they don't see that they only see what we are sharing with them on this very entity so we are we created a new entity a new table and uh, we have lookups and uh, quick views uh, in there but they are not actually getting access um, to the application or the applicants themselves, so they can't contact them on a personal level or whatsoever. This is making it easier for all of our security model by having this in an extra entity and just make stuff visible on this new entity without having to share the original tables where this is come from. So, Bart, I bought you some time. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of finished the the rating here. So the on the application now, the users who you want the feedback from, they've already given the feedback. So previously, if you remember, they had to just uh, give a one-liner feedback. Now they can see more, so they can get to see the skill. They can give a five-point rating, so they can give uh, also a comment on why they're giving that rating, and this will help the recruiter to move the application forward and also go into the final contracting stage. So this is something like it's very flexible because like we mentioned, it doesn't have to be um, somebody with good levels of permissions. It is all handled by uh, by workflows that once the stage is entered, we look into the user and then we provide them the ownership because they can view only what they can um, it's a kind of a user level permission. If I go back to the feedback, you can see that the process actually ran and it, the ownership is with the user who is actually um, um, giving a feedback for the applicant. So like we said, once the applicant and application is, is um, 
through this GDPR process if we deactivate those. So within that time period, everything is gone. So if you, um, this will become like uh, anonymous and so that the document will be going, going away. All the user is left with is their own feedback. So there are no trail, they cannot go back and check the applicant information. So this way we are taking care that the GDPR problems are also handled through this, right? So that's the complete feature set. Uh, I think I have covered everything uh, from end to end. So we have a nice story that you can have the broad beam, which is really, really big. You can post to multiple uh, recruiting channels, different job boards. Everybody's landing onto the portal. You can control the portal better. You can, you can communicate to the portal better with uh, nice designs per vacancy and also you can show your recruiter image that everything without customizing you can see everything is standard i was able to just do with configuration of course broad beam integration you need more details on a technical level so this is something that we will not cover today but we'll keep the lines open for you you can communicate with holger or myself to get these questions answered so at this point i would hand it over back to holger and uh, thank you for um participating in this little session on recruiting. Yeah, before we go on, uh, I uh, quickly recap what we have seen. Uh, we saw the broadband integration, how we have now a new recruiting channel and potentially multiple more because it's connected to thousands of job boards. Uh, we showed you the authentication in there and how to publish actually on vac vacancy forms. We went on on showing you the hiring team uh, where we created a new table actually for the hiring team members for the feedback and um, for the selection on the vacancy and how this is pub uh, copied on every application so that you can handle quickly uh, and GDPR uh, conform um, all the hiring team members and feedbacks which we are getting uh, from people who are involved in the hiring process but not necessarily have to carry an, a security role high enough like an HR manager for example other supervisors and employees can now be a part of a hiring team without having to have an extra license uh, and without having to have broader and more global um, security privileges and we showed you on how quick it is actually to add hiring uh, team members um, to the vacancy. In the user story, uh, Barat showed you that we are now capable on having multiple locations uh, on the vacancy and how to filter them on the portal. The recruiting contact details uh, are automatically populated, including the fields, actually, uh, including the um, the two screen shorts pictures, um, which you can add either for the hiring manager as well as for the portal image up top, the banner. And that is now end user can do this without having to uh, go to the IT department and have it uh, well configured by them or by you as a partner. Moving on, another big picture. Uh, Another big feature which we are having is the D365HR integration. The D365HR integration is not new. Uh, some of you already work with that. Uh, you know it is working, but in uh, we here and there had problems with the integration. It is, was completely based on plugin and there was no real relationship between the records. Uh, on the D365HR side and the records on our side in the hub drive solution. What we did now is we are connecting both records also on the physical level, meaning we created some lookups uh, that uh, is creating direct relationship between both ends. But before I go into it, let's talk about what is actually the D365 integration. In the middle on the power platform, you see uh, the sales model, the marketing model, as well as our modules, recruiting, HR management, talent manager, all the other modules which we are having in there, uh, which give you the full benefit of the hub drive solution in there. We are completely based on Microsoft Dynamics CRM or the power platform. 
And uh, as you are aware, uh, we are also based on the Dataverse. Microsoft's Dynamics 365 for HR is located on the Finance and Operations or AX platform over here, together with project operations, supply chain management, benefit management, commerce and uh, finance uh, itself. So the challenges which we're having is um, or what, what you're trying to deliver for um, customers who are using both solutions on uh, on the aisle is that they don't have to move data from one end to the other. So a worker on their end with an employment term should be an employee immediately. For example, that they are that they are capable on using our recruiting module. And at the moment we are hiring an applicant. It becomes an employee on our side, but it also becomes a worker on their side. So you would think that there is a direct integration between uh, the recruiting model and HR, for example. But actually, on the technical level, it works differently because it's actually two integrations. There is one out-of-the-box integration between uh, finance and operations and the CDM tables. The CDM tables are tables, dual right tables, which are made available by Microsoft, if you switch on the dual right, um, and those are located in the Dataverse itself. So what Microsoft is doing, they make workers, department, job, uh, job positions, etc., etc., available in the CDM entities, uh, in the Dataverse. And we are, with our integration, grabbing it from the CDM or from the Dataverse tables, the CDM entities, and we are synchronizing with them. So actually, there is a two-step integration, one to Dataverse from us and one from Dataverse uh, to finance and operation, especially to D365HR. Okay. So... All the records exist three times, if you say them. In, on the Power Platform itself, in the Dataverse and the CDM uh, tables, and on uh, F1O special in the D365HR environment. There is no direct link between finance and operations and the CDM tables. You can see the GUI ID so that you are capable on finding the record uh, on the other side. But till today, till rollup 36, we handled everything in here with plugins. So if a worker was created in the CDM entity, we ran a plugin and created an employee out of it. But there was no physical relationship between both of them. Um, so you couldn't actually tell which worker was belonging to which CDM without not going to any troubles. Also, especially when it came to absences, Microsoft is publishing for every absences that they have a daily absence into the CDM and they can update it. And then they are potentially, because they are not updating in the CDM, the same records like for our end that they would create the leaf, which is um, from yesterday until tomorrow, one leaf they will create three days of leave, so three records. And if they are updating one day of it, saying tomorrow uh, I want to have time off instead of eight hours, five hours, they would not update the record of tomorrow, but they would up create a second record with five hours. So then our... Um, our solution uh, plugin recognized, hey, this is an update on this one record. Potentially, how did it recognize it? Because it was the same day, same employee, we prevent this. The problem which we have faced is, if this update, for example, happened very fast, and this is just an example with a leaf because this is um, a lot where, uh, where we have a lot of problems. If, for example, um, the leave is created in D365HR, approved, and immediately, a few seconds, minutes later, updated because the end user did a mistake in there. It was possible that this 
integration created both records at the same time, which led to that our plugins weren't able to identify that this is actually the same leaf request which was updated. Second issue is employees. We were, as of now, not able to handle rehires in D365HR. Why? Because we were not able from the uh, employment which came over into the CDM entity to identify that this is actually a new employment for an employee record on our end which was deactivated before. And this is now solved by creating a physical relationship. What do I mean? Let's take a look in the system there. How do I do this? I'm creating now manually an employee, and this is, by the way, a um, test system which is integrated to D365HR. We don't need to go into D365HR uh, for what I like to show you in here because we are only caring about the integration to the CDM entity, so the first step. And you're now seeing that behind here, there's already a record, which uh, already a tab, which is called D365HR. This is not available in standard, only if you import our add-on solution to make this integration available. The add-on solution is available uh, directly in, in the um, customer center. Yeah. So in here, you see now we have the HR worker GUI ID, the D365 uh, HR worker ID, we have the personal details GUI ID, personal details worker, and uh, the worker address GUI ID. Because connected to our employee record, we are having actually three different entities or tables uh, connected on the CDM. So what I'm doing now is, I'm creating, you went for Bruce Wayne, then I'm going for Clark Kent. Let's do DC this time. Okay, Clark Kent of course has a, a mail address at the Daily Planet. And let's choose a start date. So what I'm doing right now, I'm filling only the, uh, the fields which are necessary in there. Let's say we do an April's Fool because Clark Kent would never work for us and hit save. So, HR. Yeah, thank you. There was one missing. There you go. And let's hit save. So, what is happening in the background? In the background, we created an employee but we're creating actually three, ta uh, three records and three different tables in the CDM tables. And now, if I'm going back here on the D365HR, and um, let's it refresh. I love it. So, um, as you saw, it takes a while, it's a background process. We are now having the direct links really look up to the CDM entities and how they are look like. So I can click on them and I see directly the CDM entities. Yeah. So if I've felt more, this is directly connected now. And this is what we are delivering also to D365HR. So you can see what has been delivered, what is part of the mapping. And so we added, uh, I did it now as an example for the employee, but we edit this everywhere we have a valid mapping. So you can see now a D365HR tab if you imported our add-on solution, also on leave request, employment contract, position assignment, uh, oh, employee is doubled in here, uh, the position, the job profiles, the department, the absence type setting, and the leave request is doubled in there as well, yeah, because there are multiple. Okay. So this functionality helps us for creating a better stability 
it helps us to improve bug fixing and automation as possible. And what I mentioned in the beginning, we are now capable on finding the right record for rehiring processes, which we haven't been in in the past. When a new hire came in, in D365 HR, we actually created a new employee on our end as well. And now the new employment contract can be connected to the right end. So that was a bit more technical. So let's go to on to the next more technical thing. The DataFox integration. The DataFox integration, um, as you all know, is one of our suppliers for time clocks. So to punch in attendances or not. Um, the other one is Dorma Kava. The DataFox terminals have one good thing because they are working without having to be connected to the intranet immediately. They can be uh, connected once a day and then they are synchronizing everything. But the DataFox terminal has one small disadvantage and the disadvantage is that they are working with actually physical clocks and they are quartz clocks. So they having like a normal hand watch, they have that inside. So depending on temperature, depending on uh, which side of the moon we are, or depending on, um, for example, uh, time changes. They could go wrong after a few weeks for a minute or two, and of course, customer came in and start, hey, this is not right. Why do I punch in at nine o'clock, but in the system, you are showing us that I punched in at 9.02. Okay, then what we did there is now, we added an option that the first person or that every time you punch in, we are triggering a functionality of DataFox, which is synchronizing with Azure the time. So now everything uh, or the, the clock will be reset to the right time uh, of Azure every time someone is punching in. Small improvements for customers who are using that right now and recognize that it's a few minutes off. And then we have a few uh, minor improvements, I uh, would say, um, but actually big for you is uh, we now have enabled the show all records. Actually, we replaced the show all records to see assigned records where I can tell you in the few and renaming view in leaf entitlements offset related. So. Where can we find this? I'm going back to an employee. And let's choose a different employee in order to show you that. Let's go for, let's go for, uh, let's go for Max Mustermann. Because I've been there before, same system, okay. So, especially in leaf management, in the past you had different options when you went, uh, let's maybe go for Paul Morrison. Um, in the past when uh, you said, oh, I have too many leaf requests in here, for example, 18, uh, like for Paul Morrison, in the past you had the option to see, see all records. And then you clicked on this and you saw all records of the company uh, who could be potential leave request, not as associated with Paul Morrison. What we did everywhere on the digital personal file, you now no longer have the see all records. You have now the see associated record button uh, included. And again, small improvement, but you are now only see all connected leave request of Paul Morrison. The other thing which we changed is, and we discussed that a lot internally and externally with customers, um, was the introduction of the offset functionality and what do we want to make available or visible for the customers. 
You all know the offset calculation now, and it is now on the view. We decided to show them, and also we decided to show remaining again, to not only have it here in total, but uh, if you have multiple leaf entitlements, you are now can do the full calculation, uh, which is entitlement minus taken plus minus offset will be remaining. And so we believe that employees will understand that better uh, because if they are seeing multiple of the leave entitlement records, they are now capable on uh, adding the offset up and see, hey, yeah, that fits actually. Um, I have plus two on the one and minus two on the other. Uh, so actually they are calculated against each other, but the remaining is always correct in there. Right. And a small hint, uh, no news for you, but uh, previous the work patterns uh, have been an add-on solution from Rollup 36, they become our standard. Which does not mean that you have to work uh, to use work patterns always, but when creating a new contract or employment term, now let's open the employment term. You now have the option to always choose if you either want to use the working hours tab uh, where you can fill in from Monday, uh, from Sunday to Saturday, uh, how many hours you work, or you could also tick the enable work patterns and then the work hours will change. Oh, I have to save it first. Let's save this first. Um, the work hours will change and the work pattern will appear. Yeah, let's save it. Ah. So there you have the D365HR tab. and then work patterns will show. Yeah, so this is now part of our standard solution and no longer part of an add-on solution. Uh, we have always requests and then we had the problem that if you have to add a, a, or add to the standards, uh, have to import the add-on solution and publish it that your customizations might been gone. Um, so what we did is we moved it to the standard solution. Not of part of the standard solution uh, for legacy reasons right now are the time accounts. Uh, that's why we're asking if you are importing our solution to any customer system, please uh, use the time account add-on solution, especially for new customers that they get used to it directly because this will be part of our standard solution as well. And therefore they you don't get legacy problems, especially when you start with new systems. Yeah. All right. And my favorite part of this is always reading out the highlights of bugs resolved. You see highlights of bugs, of course. Those are the biggest bugs which we solved. They are not highlights, but it's good that we solved them and that is a highlight in itself. The calculation of hours in an absence uh, with bank holiday is wrong. Yeah, we had a problem that there was a bank holiday in the middle um, and unfortunately the absence was calculated wrong in certain conditions, um, not always, but in certain conditions, uh, solved it in there. We had a case where the attendant hours weren't updated um, and were null instead of zero. And of course, this led that the overtime wasn't calculated properly. The carried forward for overtime does not work in offset is missing. Um, that is something uh, we fixed. And in here, I like to encourage you to use time accounts as well, because it will get down the number of leaf entitlement of type over time down drastically. For example, if you are using time accounts on a weekly base, you can have a maximum of 52 uh, leave entitlements. If you are using not using the time accounts in there, you will end up with at least 360, uh, 65 records. Each employee on the overtime record, I wouldn't suggest. Of course, that takes longer time to process, etc. So let's use time account instead. And we had a case where um, 
I think it was based on the language that the license assignment was actually empty after the usage of the package deployer. Um, this is no longer the case. The package deployer was updated in there and now the license assignment will be present there. And we had, and some of you might saw it, that we have start date attribute name uh, of undefined was a, a small fix on the absence calendar, which we did there. Error when carry forward holidays to the PSA calendar. Uh, we had an error with public holidays or no, actually vacations uh, to the PSA calendar. This is fixed with importing rollup 36 as well. The JavaScript error on employee and supervisors form in leave request when you had actually, um, when you had customization on the form and didn't work, this is now not a problem. The JavaScript should be fine even with your customizations in. We have team shifts are not shown in the daily summary. This is now fixed as well. Uh, so if you are using our Teams shift in shifts integration, uh, they are now also be able to be shown on the daily summaries. The error message when publishing vacancy via the Bundesagentur for Arbeit, um, there have been multiple in there and they are all solved. Uh, I'm aware that there is still one case with a BFA um, but this is not related to this. Um, so biggest issues are solved there. Uh, we have a stabilization of prevent overbooking logic. Um, so you know that with rollup 33, we introduced a feature that we can prevent based on the absence type settings, the overbooking of a leaf entitlement. So if you have uh, only five leaf entitlements of vacation left and you want to go on vacation for six days, actually we are preventing this. This was a problem uh, where we had the self-approval enabled, introduced in rollup 35. Um, and now we actually made sure that even the self-approval is not possible if you're not having sufficient leaf entitlements. System doesn't assign owner of child workflows. Uh, this is mainly a problem of a two minute timeout. We streamlined the um, the plugins in there, so we have less two minute timeouts and solved it there for. And we had uh, another error message in the absence calendar solved. HR for Dynamics user cannot be deactivated. Yes. Um, this is. Um, that you are, if if you have uh, processes assigned to um, a user and you deactivate the user, uh, you will actually have the problem that the processes which are run based on the user level uh, will no longer work. Therefore, uh, we now prevent this. Summary page does not show actual number of applications in the system the summary page or other the uh, interactive dashboard is now showing this. And the employee cannot see leaf entitlement was a problem on the um, uh, on the security role, which is now fixed as well. All right, Whew. a lot of tickets there. And those are only the highlights, which brings me to the biggest point. Thank you to our R&D department and the product management department um, for doing tremendous work since rollup 35 i know it's not easy and uh, this is a lot of work uh, creating actually not one in uh, integration but working on three portal broadbean and ours while fixing a lot of bugs um, that is really really great thank you guys thank you to product management and development but that brings me also to the next point the process of ro publishing rollup 36 is not done yet. Uh, we like you, the partners, but also you as employees uh, to help us testing the rollup to really get it stable and uh, to improve rollup 36 as long as it is in the development phase. So please download it via the portal. Please partners, you can, can't download it there any longer. Uh, the new place is inside the partner portal in Teams on the Teams channel. Um, please import it directly to a test system. You can import it to test system of uh, customers as well. Please do not import it to the production environment because this is right now just a release candidate 
very far in development, but it might not be the latest one, which actually will be published as a production. And this will depend on the feedback which we are getting from you. If you see any errors, mistakes, please, uh, on Rollup 36, please use the email address rolluptickets at hubdrive.com uh, to give us feedback. You have any product idea? please directly uh, forward them to productideas at hubdrive.com. Um, before uh, asking you to uh, ask any questions, uh, let me uh, thank Barat for it. It was the first time uh, helping me out with introducing a new roll-up. I think he did great. Uh, thank you, Barat, thank uh, you. for helping it. And, and now over to you. Any questions um, so far? Anything which we should show again, um, please? Okay, you have to take the opportunity on how the partners can reach out to us in, um, in the next days, next weeks, about any technical questions. Yes, please reach out to your partner managers directly um, or and use uh, Alliance partner channels on implementation uh, services inside the teams. Uh, that's the fastest if we could get the conversation uh, running in there, that that would be really great. Hmm. Also, uh, please, have... yeah, go ahead, I mean. Sorry, um, so uh, just real quick, uh, maybe I also, I don't know, uh, I didn't, give so much attention in the last few minutes, but uh, have you hey. talked about the licensing model for uh, the Broadbean connection? So is there something, mm. is there to be a partnership framework or something which you have set up with Broadbean? Yes, there is one partnership framework set up with Broadbean, uh, Broadbean uh, but we do not have the final answer uh, or numbers yet, uh, but we are having a partnership agreement we will sell broadbean with uh, uh, from us but there's also a consultation service from broadbean connected to it because setting up broadbean on the broadbean side is not that that easy because they give you consulting to your customers actually which job portals uh, to focus most uh, because it's most or best beneficial to your customers as well. This will be included in there. And as soon as we have more details on this, we will publish that to the partner network as well, especially to the office hours. Maybe we can tell you more already on the 28th when we are doing the webinar. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. One thing is in, in preparation for this um, for the setup, I also had to install a flow. Uh, so this is for the image, the portal image that it shows on the portal. For to test this, you need to have 36 version along with the flow solution. Uh, Holger, this will be available to them from from the partner portal, right? Whatever they Correct. require for the installation. Correct. Everything will be available to you um, on the portal. Okay, as of now. Okay, so thank you everyone and uh, looking forward to meet you in the next, well, next sessions <laughs> where we introduce Rollup 37 to you or in one of our other meetings. Thank you. Thank you thank all. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.